Let's say that you have created a website for your small business and now you would like to share it with your customers. So you need to host it somewhere. It might as well be a container on your router. For this demonstration, I've created a, a silly little website for a coffee shop that just consists of the drinks menu and some floating coffee cups. The site consists of three files that take up only about two megabytes of free space. Really, we could host it on a calculator, so it will not be issue for this router. So let's take a look at the configuration that I've already got in place before we do anything else. It's only a few lines of configuration. For now, I've left out the firewall as I am providing the internet connection through the Ether1 port. I'm also using the very same port to access the router. Then I have a wireless access point set up that's handing out addresses from the 10.0.0 network. And I've got the very basic uh, container configuration in place. Obviously, uh, under device mode, containers are enabled. I've added a VETH interface that is included in the containers bridge. And we're using the 172.17.0 network uh, similar to other container videos in the past. And then there's a masquerade rule that ensures that we have internet connection both for our containers and also for any devices that connect uh, to the wireless access point. The only part of this configuration that you cannot directly copy is the registry URL. You should probably use the default Docker's registry, which is registry-1.docker.io. So I have a USB stick inserted and next we're going to copy the uh, website files onto this USB stick. Now I have a folder named HTML. I'm just going to drop it into the drive. And next we will create a mount point for the default Nginx uh, container. We could alternatively use something like Flask or maybe build our own uh, web server from Alpine or BusyBox, which uh, would take up less space, but 60 megabytes is not much. And since we got a USB stick, it's not really an issue at all. Go to container slash mount, add destination slash user slash share slash nginx slash HTML. And then the source is going to be on the location of our folder. Then I'll give it a name HTML. Now I can go back to the container section and add remote image nginx column latest interface v1 root directory is going to be on my flash drive. I'll create a folder nginx and then mounts is going to be HTML. Now while that is being created, I need to add port forwarding uh, to make sure that we can access this website from our uh, browser. So under IP firewall NAT, add chain destination NAT action destination NAT protocol TCP uh, destination port 80, two ports 80 and two address 172.17.0.2, which is the address of my container. Now I can start my container. Now if I open the browser and enter the IP address of my router, and I'm greeted with my coffee shop website. The way I structured the uh, NAT rule makes this work also from any device that is accessing internet through the um, our wireless access point. So uh, the next step, I guess we could create a static DNS entry so that uh, users of our uh, wireless access point could just enter um, something like coffee.local into their browser instead of the IP address. So under IP DNS, we need to first enable allow uh, remote requests. 
This allows the router to act as a DNS server. Now I can go to static subsection, add name coffee.local uh, with the address which I'm using for the wireless access point, which is 10.0.0.1. Now if I connect to this access point with my phone and enter coffee.local into the browser, I'm indeed greeted with the uh, coffee shop website. Okay, so far so good, but not all our customers are gonna be connecting to our access point and they might want to view our site from their homes. So we need to make our website accessible through the internet. So first of all, we will need to purchase a domain name and then we have several options how to make this work. Number one is that if we have a public static IP, then we could have DNS point directly to our router, but that's unlikely for a small business. Um, then we get option two would be to have dynamic DNS, which means that the router will get a dynamic IP address uh, from the ISP and the DNS records will be have to continuously updated. Now, both of these are good options, but there's still the TLS problem. Our website is HTTP and the end users browsers will give them warning that this is not a secure website because encryption is not taking place. Which brings us to the third option, which is to use the Cloudflare Zero Trust uh, container. We already have a video on that and it will solve the TLS issue. The end user has no way of telling whether the TLS certificate is stored on the Cloudflare server or the router, so they simply won't know that the website is actually HTTP uh, as their traffic will be encrypted to the Cloudflare server. The only issue that you might have with this is that the traffic going through the Cloudflare tunnel is, is effectively bypassing the firewall on your router. So there could be security implications I can't comment much on how to do this securely as I haven't really explored this further. But if you would like me to do that, let us know in the comments. Should we buy a domain name and set up our little coffee shop website using Cloudflare?